Hey, what's going on everyone? This is Ari Views back with another video and iOS 16.3 has finally been released to the public after going through its beta stages. Now this update is not as big as iOS 16.2, it doesn't have as many new features and changes as iOS 16.2 did, but it's still quite a solid update, it has a few new features and changes and some really important fixes. That's why I suggest everyone goes ahead and updates to iOS 16.3. And once you have done that, here are a few things that you need to do once you update your device to iOS 16.3. Now the first thing I suggest you do is head on to your settings and go under the general settings, go to software update, go to automatic updates and make sure you have these turned on. Now since iOS 16.2 you know that now we have security responses and system files that it is a new feature that will actually install some really small updates, not update the iOS version but just fix something that needs to be fixed. Turn that on to be automatic so you don't have to bother with that and if you just don't want to update straight to iOS 16.3 you want to do that actually automatically. You can just go ahead and enable these two and iOS will be downloaded and also installed automatically overnight. Just plug in your device to charge and you're good to go. But keep in mind that you have this enabled all the time and you get those security responses which are really important for your device. Now a lot of times when Apple releases a new software update there will be carrier updates as well. Now there is no like button or something like that to make a carrier update but what you need to do is just head on to your settings, go to the general settings and go to the about section. Once you go here, if there is a carrier update for your carrier, you will see the carrier update right here. So no need to do anything else, just head on to your settings general about and just stay there for like five to six seconds and if there's something if there's an update for your carrier it will pop up right there the next thing you should do is head on to the app store go to your account and make sure that you have your apps updated once you have updated your device to iOS 16.3, make sure you also update your apps. A lot of the apps, especially the most popular and the bigger ones, will release updates after the release of a new software update. So make sure you have done that so the, the apps will work as they should with a new iOS update. If you don't want to bother doing that manually here from the App Store, you can just go ahead and go to your settings, go to the App Store and turn on right here automatic updates. So these updates will be downloaded and installed automatically on your device. Now this next move is for the people who have updated to the beta versions of iOS 16.3. So if you're on iOS 16.3 beta, you probably have the RC version, which is the exact same one as the public release, so you don't get a public release update on your device. But if you no longer wanna update to iOS betas, probably iOS 16.4 beta one will be released very, very soon. So if you don't wanna update your device to that, update you can just go ahead and remove the beta profile so if you just want to get out of the beta program head on to the general settings and then go to vpn and device management and here we'll have the beta profile so again if you just don't want to install any more betas you just want to stay on the public releases of ios go ahead and remove the profile and reboot your device the next thing you should do, now this is more like a fun thing, go ahead and try out the new iOS 16.3 Unity wallpaper. This is a great wallpaper that Apple has added to the iOS 16.3 RC version and of course the public release. Now what I like about this wallpaper is that it has like a lot of options to customize. So you will have a lot of different colors, so this is the default one, it will say Unity here and then when you move on you will have all kinds of different colors which of course you can choose and actually just create the wallpaper that you like, the one for your taste. And also the clock right there, you will have here with these like bold fonts and you can see it actually only has like two colors. It will have black, white and the transparent color. It doesn't allow it to actually change to any color one, but it still actually looks pretty, pretty good. So just go ahead and switch here to any color you like. You can actually create some pretty cool wallpapers for your device. Now, if you have a device with the always on display, that's pretty cool because when you just turn on the always on display you can see how it will be displayed on your screen it actually looks pretty amazing 
Now with iOS 16.2, actually, Apple had released this new feature called Advanced Data Protection. If you want to protect your data, encrypt those, you can actually turn on this feature and I suggest you do that. So you go to your settings at the top of your settings at your iCloud profile. You tap there, you go to your iCloud and go to Advanced Data Protection. Right here, we'll have all the explanations, everything you need to know about how this works. This will encrypt your backups, your messages, your notes, photos, and all that. But of course, you will need to set up the account recovery because you will be responsible for actually decrypting these data. Apple won't be able to do that for you. So make sure you go ahead and if you want to turn this on, always make sure that you go ahead and set up your account recovery. You can add a contact there or you can just enable the recovery key to make sure that you will be able to actually decrypt your data that you have encrypted with this new feature. Now with iOS 16.3, Apple has added also security keys. Now you can now use physical security keys for your data. Now this can be found again under your profile at the top of the settings app. You go to passwords and you will find here the security keys feature. So if you tap on add security keys, this is what you need to know here. You will actually need to have two security keys for this to work. Basically, this is done so that you don't just lose one of them and you also lose your data. So you have at the all time two different security keys so that you know your data is safe. You always will have one. So right here you can see it will give you all the explanations you need, everything you need to know in order to set up security keys. So go ahead and take a look at this feature. It's actually pretty cool. And if you want to do it, just make sure that you have two security keys. Another thing that I talked about earlier a few seconds ago and I will talk again here in more details is account recovery. Make sure that you set up account recovery. Now this is not a new feature of iOS 16.3. This has been here before, but you need to set it up on your device. Now the easiest way would be maybe to add a recovery contact or just enable a recover key, whichever one you want. And you can find this feature simply by going to your settings at the top of your settings tap on your Apple ID passwords and you can go ahead and tap on add recover account recovery. You can add one of your contacts, someone you trust from your family or friends, anyone you trust add there and you can use that contact or your recovery key to recover your data in case something happens to your Apple ID. Next, we're going to take a look at some things that are like more general, but I think it's a really, really good time when you update your device to take a look at these things because these are really important. And first of them are your privacy settings. Head on to privacy and security and take a look at your privacy settings. First of all, take a look at tracking. See which apps are tracking you. So you will have this feature on iOS. Whenever you install a new app, you will see a pop up just asking you whether you allow that app to track you or not. Just in case you have accidentally allowed an app to track you and you don't want that to happen, you will find that app here. So you can see here a list of all the apps that have asked it to track you and you can just go ahead and enable or disable them from here. Another thing that I suggest you do is go ahead and take a look at your Bluetooth, your camera, your microphone, also speech recognition, maybe your files or photos and see which apps have access to these. So all of these apps you can see right here have access to my microphone and you can do that for your device. Take a look at this and see if there are apps that have access to your stuff that shouldn't be there. And of course, make sure you go ahead and turn them off. Another really important thing is the app privacy report. Now, if you don't use this feature, you should start using it. Head on to your settings, privacy and security, and right here you will find app privacy report. Go here and turn this on if you don't have it on. If you have it on, then you will see something like this. You will see here data and sensors, app network activity. You will also see here website network activity. Now what you will find here is all the apps, all the websites that have used your data, your network, and also your sensors. So what you can do here is take a look at what these apps are using on your device. So I can see here mail has used my contacts, or I can see maybe another app photos has used my contacts as well, messages, my contacts and photos. So you can take a look at these and in detail see which app is using what on your device at what time. And if it's something suspicious, then you can go ahead and just turn off the settings, the privacy settings for these apps for those data that you don't want them to have access to. 
Next up are emergency contacts. Now again, this is not a new feature, but something that I suggest everyone does enables it and checks it and it's a really good time when you update your device you take a look at these things because you might overlook them and they are really important so you go to your settings go to emergency and sos and make sure that you have your emergency contact right here i have it here if you don't you will see a plus button so you can go ahead and add someone you trust as your emergency contact and that's really really important Next up are notifications. Go ahead and take a look at your notifications. Now, notifications will play a huge role on the battery life of your iPhone because they will just consume a lot of battery, waking up the screen and all that consumes a ton of battery. So see which apps are allowed to send you notifications. Like you can see right here, I have a ton of apps that I have notifications completely turned off. I don't really need notifications from a wallpaper app or an app that is not really that important. So there will be also apps that you can add to your scheduled summary, which is actually really, really useful. So you have your scheduled summary right here. You can go ahead and choose here which apps you want to add there. So you will also see right here in weekly average of notifications from your apps and you can go ahead and add any app you want there. But again, you can configure that any way you like. Just make sure you check out your notifications and just use the ones that you really need. And last but not least is the battery usage of your iPhone. So whenever you update your device, head on once to the battery settings here and you will see under battery health and charging right here the maximum capacity of your device usually when you update your device you will see here a change that's because of course when up ios updates it will just recheck all the components of the iphones and that is the time when it shows the real battery health percentage now once you have done that you can also take a look at your apps here and see which apps are maybe using a lot of battery so if you see apps there that are consuming a ton of battery my suggestion is that you just delete them of course if you have been using them just for like a few minutes and they have consumed a ton of battery make sure you replace those apps on your device so that is it for this video guys these are a few things that i suggest you do once you have updated your device to the new iOS 16.3. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Go ahead and leave a like if you did. Also, don't forget to subscribe for more iOS 16.3 videos, and I'll see you on the next one.